Hi everybody, it's Bonnie. I have a fun idea for you for a decorative gift box or any kind of box really. I found this container at Joann's and I was just thrilled because abracadabra on the inside they've already finished it in a cute paper. So that means I don't have to line it or I don't have to paint it or anything. I can just decorate the outside. So for this, I'm in the Christmas mood right now and I decided I would make some kind of a Christmas-like decoration on the outside. And I began by drawing a line under the bottom edge of the lid because I knew I couldn't put fabric any higher than that spot. I knew that if I did, the lid wouldn't fit and, and that just won't work out very well. So I've drawn this line so I know where the top edge of my um, outside fabric can be. And then I began with my stabilizer, which in this case I'm using crinoline or buckram, I forget which one it is. So I cut a piece of that wider than I knew I needed for the height of the container and longer than the circumference. So I had a little bit of room to play with when I was designing and um, making changes if I needed to. So here's the basic stabilizer and that eventually will be glued on when I've, onto the box when I've got it all decorated and so on. So the next step was to fuse the stabilizer and the back of the fabric that I wanted on that strip and trim them so that the edges were the same. And again, this is wider than I needed for the box and longer than I need for the circumference. I guess you wouldn't have to do this trimming at this point, but it, it just kind of made it easier for me to think where the ornaments will go on the front side. I have a nice straight edge to work with. I love this particular evergreen fabric and it's very, very old, but I cherish each piece of it and I find wonderful uses for it. Here's the fabric. I don't know if it's still available. I would doubt it, but it sure is cool. And then I found this panel in my stash, fused the back of that panel so I could cut out the ornaments and add on to the evergreen fabric. You'll notice that each of the ornaments has a highlight on it and I tried to get those all to line up uh, from one direction. Uh, I made this upside down on purpose, right? Right, I couldn't figure out how to turn it and I wanted to get the video done for you. So I also wanted to show you how I cut these little intricate spots. I learned a long time ago to pretty much hold your scissors at the same angle and move the fabric into the scissors. You get much more control that way and your cuts are smoother. By the way, this is a serrated scissors from Karen K. Buckley. It's really nice for these little tiny cuts. In some cases, I cut off parts of the ornament because I didn't really need all of it or it was too elaborate or I knew I'd be stitching over it with my evergreen boughs that I'll be making. I tried to paint the top edge that won't be covered in fabric and that didn't work, so I'll have to get some black paint and do that later. But I wanted to get this ready for you. Here I've laid on the ornaments and you see how the highlights are kind of all in the same general direction. I 
Next up, I needed to cover the edge of the lid, the band that goes around it. So I decided to use soft felt. And I also cut a circle for the to cover the top of the lid with some stiff felt. And I'll show you more about that in just a minute. But then I figured out which ornaments I wanted to use and how I wanted to place them. And that gets fused in place before you try to glue it on the lid. This panel was so luscious and it also had a border strip which was just the right size for the lip around the lid. So I fused that. No, I did. Yeah, I fused that and cut it very carefully. I think it's cool how um, fusible helps uh, stiffen your fabric just a little bit so it doesn't wiggle around much when you're trying to cut um, precise spots, precise lines. And I think it also helps it so it doesn't get on the, uh, or it doesn't wiggle around on the cutting board. I think there's a little friction there. So I fused that on the black felt, uh, felt strip. And now I'm putting weld bond on the lid. This is my absolute all time favorite glue. This um, has a great consistency. It will glue just about anything in my craft arsenal together, including acrylics, and it dries crystal clear. I find that I can only get this online, but it's, it's worth the wait to, to get it. I order a couple of bottles at a time. And the other thing I like about this a lot is that this the applicator has a, a slit for a tip rather than just a little round hole. So you can get a lot more on and it, and, uh, it helps to spread it nicely. Speaking of spreading, I went back to my first grade teaching days when I recalled ha having the kids use a popsicle stick sometimes to spread glue around really works well. Especially on the edges and it saves a lot of mess on your fingers and the table and all that. Alright, so there's a stiff lid with the ornaments fused on and it just took the glue so nicely it wasn't flopping around on me as I put the glue on the back. Now you see a little edge sticking out on the lid? I have to cover that and I'll show you in a minute how I do that. Now it's time to glue the strip around the lid. More weld bond. I find it's nice to glue two surfaces and give them a little dry time, just a minute or two, to become more tacky before you stick them together. And here's the cording I put around the lid to cover the gaps. Here's the layout for the ornaments, and I began with uh, my darkest value of green thread made us pretty much um, well a straight stitch line to show where I wanted the evergreen bow to go and then I went back with the same dark green and did my evergreen stitching which is a straight stitch just back and forth back and forth in lots of different directions I think it looks great against the background fabric of some printed evergreen And to make it even fuller looking and a little more dynamic, I went over it that stitching with a brighter green, a lighter value thread, and I think it made all the difference in the world. I did break my own rule here, which usually is to make sure that you use three different values, but I was planning at the time to sew some 
scribble stitch snow on this evergreen bow and uh, I didn't do it for the sake of time so two seem to work in this um, instance because I've got the nice values in the background fabric so here we are with the finished container I hope you love it as much as I do I've also got a few of my other containers to show you. These are ones that I have lined and that I have uh, covered the bottom of as well. And these are from some trips we took, uh, photographs I should say, from some trips we took. And these are more work, but they're certainly worth it. You get a beautiful finished bottom and uh, finished inside that coordinates with whatever you're putting on the outside. So I hope you've gotten some inspiration, some fun, and um, maybe in the future I'll have a class for you to learn how to make these more complicated ones. Let me know if you're interested. Happy stitching!